Hello folks, it's Pastor Bill once again, and here we are with the November blog. It's my privilege to be able to come to you through this means and share the Word of God and to share my heart with you. This, uh, today I'm going to take you to Acts chapter 4 and verse 23. Let's read it together. And being let go, speaking of the disciples, they, being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. Now here we have a couple of the early apostolic preachers just just being just leaving jail. They had been beaten, they had been threatened, they had been persecuted. And now they've got a decision to make. I've I've read this verse many times and I've always been captured by the indirect message that's contained here. You know, great emphasis has been placed upon the unity in the body of Christ and recognizing the church in its totality. And I'm the first to agree on the necessity of this, and I, and I really rejoice in the progress that's been made over the last decade. Having said this, however, I believe there is something we tend to miss and are missing, namely the uniqueness, and it's not to be taken lightly, but the uniqueness that God values and has placed us in. Each functioning part of the body of Christ has a purpose. Each ministry group out here in our world has a purpose. Every denomination that I know of mainline Christianity serves a purpose. And sometimes we are, we are made to think that every group of people, every denomination, every religious group uh, is just the brainchild of some person somewhere that wanted to be a bishop or a leader and, and, and have something to lead, but uh, that's not so. That's not so. The long list of Christian groups and, and various denominations are really the expression of God speaking to their founder's heart, his desire to form something that he wanted to take place in the earth. It reflects a progression of truth line upon line, precept upon precept. If you carefully examine the multiplicity of Christianity, of Christian ministries, this will become very, very evident to you. Now, my pastor, my pastor taught me this. He said, if one revelation destroys the previous revelation, you've got the definition of heresy. And I believe he's still right. We're all in the same body, but we are all in the same company. We're all part of the human race. But we're not all in the same family. I'm an Annis, you're a Brown, a Smith, a, you know, whoever. And, but we're not, all, we're not all in the same family. God has placed us in the body as it has pleased him. It wasn't my choice. It was his placement. This placement includes the Christian group that we're part of. It's our company. It's not just a place to get ordination so we can function with proper recognition by our Canadian government and get a tax deduction uh, for, for our expenses. That, that's, that's not what it is. I find some people coming to us for ordination for some very strange reasons. And, but we need to understand it's the place where we are connected. And we're connected first. We're connected first. The place where God has called us and placed us so we can be understood. It's the place we can go and tell our story, good or bad, and receive strength to continue. In the verse we're examining, Peter and John had just been seriously threatened. They've been threatened for preaching and for healing a man in the name of Jesus. And the threatening was severe enough that they were having some second thoughts whether or not they should continue. And... Uh, what are they going to do? We find the answer. They went to their own company and they told their story. They're among those who understood their mission and their message. See, in your own company, there's two things that are of value. People will understand your mission. And in your own company, they'll understand your message. You could go outside somebody in the body of Christ who is a Christian and they're going to heaven, but they will not understand your message. Maybe you've been called to proclaim the word of faith. Maybe the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a strong emphasis in your ministry. And I want to tell you, when the enemy comes in, 
you better make certain that when you go and seek counsel, you're among people that not only understand your mission, but they fully understand your message. They were strengthened and received great grace and wisdom and continued, the Bible said, lacking nothing. And they had sought outside their own company some, some help. Their mission may not have been, may have been understood, but the message may have been questioned. It was in the name of Jesus. It wasn't popular in the day. From its inception, Faith Christian Fellowship has been a ministry with a mandate. You see, the Harrisons weren't looking for something to be leaders of when they formed Faith Christian Fellowship back in 1972. They were fulfilling a mandate that God had spoken to their hearts supernaturally. In obedience, they birthed God's desire, a family church, a charismatic teaching center, reaching the world for Jesus. Many years later, here we are many, many, many years later, and our company today encompasses 52 nations, thousands of believers, and a host of churches who are still thrilled with their family. Why am I writing this? First, to catch your attention and to focus you on the fact that you are important and that you are loved by us. I want you to understand and know that Daska and I, whenever a new member comes into Faith Christian Fellowship, we rejoice over that person the same as in the natural when a new baby came into our home. Because we understand this is God's gift to this family of which all of you are a part. And this is God's placement of that person. From this day on, we will rejoice in their successes and we will assist them in their failures. We will strengthen them in their weaknesses and we will celebrate them in their strengths. Oh, family of God, I am so happy that God placed me in this family with you as my brothers and sisters. And I am praying for you and your ministry. God bless you, God loves you, and we love you too.